Chapter 1 Calm Days and Storm Clouds Part 3 of 4 Disbursement Directive 49% Complete Subroutine 8 12 Time Elapsed Commencing Active Scan of Surrounding Area So as to avoid any tectonic hotspots and other hazards, XJ-29S sensors swept the deep waters in a 10,000 square kilometer area. As the computer mapped out the landscape, the submarine was picked up and was too close to be ignored. Anomalous signal detected. Analyzing, small pocket of atmosphere surrounded by metallic alloy shell. Narrowing scanners. Alert. Human life signs detected. Vessel sensor suite is capable of detecting this unit. Scanning vessel armament. Current depth beyond vessel's capability to attack. Likelihood of engagement. 0% Vessel Threat Index, Negligible Native Technological Reassessment Subroutine Active Extrapolating Technology Level Required to Create Target Vessel Error Human Technology Level Far Above Projected Estimates Contingency Protocol Stage 1 Activated Query, Contact Home World Under Evaluation Possibility of Transmission Interception Hi. Reevaluating Mayan timetable. Estimated time for human extinction within acceptable parameters. Query Possibility of encryption failure upon transmission? Deemed low. Query Probability of humans conferring transmission of being non human origin? 99.01%. Repeat query Contact home world? Negative. Mayans have same access to human technology. Human extermination will occur within acceptable time frame. Humans unaware of this unit's purpose or origins. Ignore vessel deemed best action. Query, halt contingency protocol? Negative. Move to standby status. Continuing disbursement directive. Asterisk. Back aboard the Xi'an, Roberts looked at his watch. Yank stealth toy or not, command will have my ass if I linger here any longer. Helm. Bring us about and back to our original station. Knowing the Brits, they've probably been sipping tea the whole time and haven't budged. Aye aye skipper. A few minutes later the XO approached his captain. Think command will tell the Brits or Yanks what we found. No doubt. It's part of standard procedure that all ship actions are accounted for the duration of the exercise. He gave the XO a troubled glance. Shouldn't you already know that? The officer shrugged. Just making sure you know it. That way if you don't get this promotion, you know who and what to blame. Roberts gave him a smug grin. We'll see. Asterisk. A charcoal earth mare pressed herself against a tree. The midday sun-lit forest around her was quiet. Far too quiet for her liking, but she had a target that needed eliminating. So caution was in order. The target had a hostage at gunpoint and she needed to be exact in her attack or both would die. She kept her breathing calm and level as to reduce noise. Okay Bethy, the ground's uneven, so you have to comp for that. Plus he's holding the hostage really tight so I need to make sure not to screw it up. She gathered a heavy dose of mana in her right foreleg and found a patch of moss to stomp down on. Her hoof fall was quiet and the magic coursed through the earth to impale the target. The ground rippled and cracked with moderate noise between her and the target. She watched with satisfaction as a spear of stone shot out and stabbed right through the terrorist's chest in an explosion of straw and brightly colored confetti. She pumped a hoof and quietly hissed a cheer yet it proved to be short-lived. The charcoal pony heard a slight crackling of wood and almost pushed off and away from the tree in time before five branches shot out from the trunk and ensnared her limbs. She struggled for a few seconds, but the branches thickened until she was completely immobilized. She sagged as she knew what was coming. Loki dropped out of the tree and landed heavily on the ground next to the trainee. She blew on her left hoof as if it was a smoking gun barrel. Know what you did wrong cadet. I went up against Houdini in pony form, the trainee muttered to herself as she tested her restraints again. It wasn't meant to be heard, but Loki picked it up anyway. 
partially, but mostly because you let the mana trail between you and the target run too close to the surface. Even a magic blind human could see the rippling in the ground. Loki lightly tapped a hoof on the tree and the branches broke off. The bark reformed so the plant would suffer no lasting damage. The charcoal mare looked up at the top branches and saw no hiding spot or any climbing equipment Loki could have used. Mind if I ask how you got up there ma'am? I didn't see you on the way in. Both ponies knew the use of invisibility bracelets was forbidden under the assumption that the enemy would have a counter to them. Namely, a hostile pony. It wasn't something Loki or the herd liked to think about, but it was hardly outside of the realm of possibility. However that was not what was currently on the green mare's mind. Loki scowled at the pony in front of her. What have I said about calling me ma'am? The trainee cringed a little. Sorry boss. Satisfied, the hacker gave a cryptic answer to the previous question. Because I wanted to. Now go back to the starting area and get a better camo job this time. Solid charcoal is only good in a few areas around here. The cadet nodded in acceptance. Yes boss. The green mare was about to hunt down the next trainee when her headset crackled to life. Loki, it's Alex. How's your group doing? The green mare waited until the trainee was far out of earshot. We're making progress. Some of them don't like painting themselves in camo colors though. Toon's snide smirk could be heard through the radio. This coming from the mare who never touches the stuff. Pa. I could sneak up on you even if you were using a divination array. I don't need it. That had actually been proven as fact, and it irked the alicorn to no end. How do you do that anyway? Give it to me straight this time. Easy. I just think of myself as still being human. But, Alexia's brain skipped a synapse at the completely serious tone that told the silver pony that she wasn't lying this time. That's not how rays work. Works for me, Loki deadpanned. Alexia groaned loudly as her ear ticked in irritation. At least you're the only person who can do that. Anyway, this isn't why I called. My sister Elizabeth will be arriving earlier than expected. She'll be at the post office in an hour. Loki looked at her phone from her small satchel. Sorry, work's going to take a few more hours. But I have to ask, why this early? Bummer. Beth wouldn't say why over the phone. She was extremely pissed at the folks so I can only imagine she mouthed off to them for the last time. Loki started trotting back to the marshalling area after putting the phone away. They're still against that, disgust evident in her tone. Toon was more than a little despondent. They in half the country. People like them don't believe the three to one gender imbalance. Every other mammal on Earth has 50-50. They do know our species didn't originate on Earth right. Alexia sighed in depleted exasperation over the phone. I don't know. We've told everyone that time and time again, but some of the more paranoid people are still convinced we're a genetic experiment from the government. Loki saw the simple wood and straw sunshade where the other trainees were milling as she crested a ridge. Well good luck. I gotta go. The cadets snapped to attention at her approach. All right lads and lasses, those of you who failed get to run laps around the yard. A round of muted groans came from over half the group. The rest of you, still get to run laps around the DQ before you get a blizzard. The victors were mostly grateful for that, except for one of the very newest trainees. What if we don't like ice cream? Loki was appalled, and every cadet knew what the green mare's view on sweets was. How could you possibly hate ice cream cadet Biggs, her tone was level for the moment. The drab green paint was wearing off of the mustard yellow stallion. Some thought that was from the amount of sweating he was doing under Loki's scrutiny. L. Lactose intolerant. Loki eyed him carefully for several seconds. Funny. Your medical file doesn't mention that. His brow furrowed. I was told no one but Bravo level and higher had clearance to see medical files. It doesn't matter how I got it, Loki replied to derail the accusation. You and I are going to have an ice cream eating contest 
and you better not wimp out before the first two gallons. With all due respect ma'am. That hardly seems like proper use of government tax dollars. The rest of the trainees inched away from the stallion as Loki's face grew cold as ice. That's why it's not coming out of the agency's pocket, she said as she walked over to get in his face. It's coming out of yours if you lose. I think right after our contest you and I are going to do some suicide sprints. 100 yards at 10 yard intervals. Do I make myself clear? He paled behind his camo paint. Right after binging on ice cream? But ma'am. Her brow twitched at the address far more than the complaining. 200. Aye aye. One of the mares in the sidelines shouted so Loki couldn't identify her. Just shut up Biggs. He complied, prompting Loki to face the small gathering. Well don't just stand there. Get going. As Biggs followed suit, Loki spoke as he passed. See you at the DQ, Mustard. Asterisk. End of Part 3